Tenuta Grimani. Now, Grimani is a surname, it's a family that has had three doji. Do you know what a doji is? Doji used to be, how shall I put it in English, like uh, the head of the Republic of Venice. And they're not one, like they had three of them. So, this winery comes from that generation, from that family branch. So, of course, what were they producing these people? They were making wine. They were making wine in the Venetian area. And uh, today the Cavagioni family is owning this property. Uh, family run business. I am uh, very, very, very curious to go taste the wine that the Republic of Venice might have had at their house wine. Yo, bro. So, clear, bright, transparent. I have it, I have it, I have it. Um, apple. Flowers. I, have you ever, have you ever smelled an apple flower? The flower of the apple trees? It's just, it's just like it's an apple but with a honey-ish element. It's so beautiful. It's like a super clean and yet it's sweet. I know you can't get sweetness technically on the nose, but you know what I mean? Um, an apple-ish, but with a floral touch. Oh man, yeah, that's what it is. I, I, I love this. What can I say? I like, I like, oh, it's clean. I like the fact that this wine is uh, reactive. Here there is a dialogue, there is a, a beautiful uh, dynamic on the palate, like the taste is kaleidoscopic. Uh, this is one of those um, false simple. The wine has got uh, acidity, there is a salty vein, these beautiful uh, flowers that are not aromatic. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you have the cleansiness of the flower touch, but you don't have the sticky aromaticity in it. And uh, the citrus is there, uh, refreshing and lingering. Uh, spicy, you can drink it by itself, you can have food with this wine. I think this is a really bright Pinot Grigio. La Torretta, the little tower. Look at the label, the Merles is there. So we are about to go try a Pinot Grigio that by the color looks like one of those bright yellow uh, pale straw color and uh, Stelvine crack. For sure the wine is not gonna be corked. It's one of those, that time of the day where I'm not gonna stop pouring. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're approaching here, I don't know where you are guys, six o'clock, which is that beautiful moment when you know, like you feel like, can I crack open a bottle of wine right now? Can I have some toasted almonds? Some crayfish, and what else would I like right now? Like a little bit of, uh, you know, maybe some celery and carrots, just, you know, to be healthy. The wine in this case is a 2018. Uh, that's why the color is a little bit darker on the nose. I think you can detect that uh, extra year of aging, uh, uh, almond, creaminess, butteriness as well. There is uh, quite um, smooth, quite quite uh, creamy is a good word. Uh, lots of ripe apples, some pears, uh, very smooth. The idea here is to go for something that is not too reactive, not too uh, bright with the acidity, but a little bit more on the, it just wants to play with this caressing touch. Uh, almond, uh, 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 almond uh, finish on the palate right now that I'm still having a little bit of it, and and um, what 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 would I what I what do I drink with? Oh, I said it was gonna be an aperitivo time.
You know what Luna is? Certo che lo sapete, Luna is the moon. Why is it called Terre di Luna? Because we are in Rovere della Luna. Where are we? We are on the northern west part of the Appalachian in the Trentino region. So Dolomiti, okay, so Dolomitic uh, presence, so like mountainy style of Pinot Grigio. Expectations for me here. But then what else can I tell you here? Um, in the shadow of the moon is the, is the name of the wine, it's all about the moon, and the moon is female. Well, the moon is female in Italy, I don't know in where you guys are from, but this is a winery that is run by a lot of female ladies, uh, the family is by a lot of female ladies, female run winery like the moon, um, the Tony family. Are we ready to try the wine? I am. So clean fruit. I love cleansiness. I love clean design of the fruit. This is why we're drinking wine to get the fruit, right? And uh, but not all the wines are so. Uh, how should I put it? So, uh, so this definition of uh, of of tangerine, uh, limes, but also there is a white peach. Slightly apricot, but like, you know, like uh, not overripe apricot, like the beautiful aromas of uh, apricots. I like it. So, on the palate, what you are, what you are getting here is a uh, very refreshing citrus kind of acidity, but also there is a um, roundness that is not like one of the kind of like butteriness, but it's more oiliness. So it's, it's this film that you're getting on the palate that can remind uh, also of some uh, uh, like hazelnuts, hazelnut oil. Actually, there is a little bit of a hazelnut flowers as well coming through. So it is fresh, the kind of like a, a, a floral, like floral touch is get, getting me in the mood for aperitive time. This is what Pinot Grigio has been designed for, mostly. Uh, Pinot Grigio delle Venezie, at least. And uh, in this case, uh, I think uh, you want to play light. You want to play with some uh, beautiful fresh salad, maybe some uh, steamed fish together with the salad, uh, some, uh, some uh, light extra virgin olive oil, not the Tuscan one. You want some Le Garda extra virgin olive oil that you know is much milder. And um, maybe like a slice of apple here and there just to compete with that kind of crunchiness that the wine has and i'm game moschina granetto pinot grigio where are we we are on the western part of the appellation in the northern part of verona actually we are from Verona is like there is an amphitheater uh, which is the Valpolicella and the Monti Lessini are just like underneath the Alps uh, uh, the Lessinia is a mountain range where actually they found uh, like uh, footprints of uh, dinosaurs <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? what am I saying? I'm saying that this is an area where the age of the soil is really really old and uh, so uh, kind of like, a, I would not alpine climate, but uh, slightly mountainy climate is not that easy to cultivate the vine because we are bordering uh, like the extreme northern limits of um, viticulture. And yet, as you know, in the Pinot Grigio area, the water makes a difference. The Lake Garda, the rivers and the seaside from Venice, these two uh, big water, the presence of, this, of the lake and the sea is keeping the winters milder and getting the summers cooler. So, uh, where am I going here with the aromatics? Uh, the first smell, the first whiff that I got is just like uh, I'm like taking a walk in a... It's springtime, first of all, and there is lots of flowers, cherry flowers. Not the cherries, because it's not red fruit, but it's the flowers. You're laughing, man. Um, ripe white fruit on the other end, quite clean. I think, uh, so I think, as um, expectations with regards to altitude or, you know, at least like the mountain presence, 
cool climate. That's what I was gonna say. Uh, thank you for that. Um, it, it, it would just gives the wine a more uh, crunchy um, touch. So as a result, there is a lot of uh, um, um, lemon juice finish in the wine. So for me, this is one of those wines that the acidity is quite, quite um, that it plays quite an important role. Uh, that is somehow calling for food, um, or maybe it's that time of the day when you are calling for food as well. But it, it's, it jokes aside. You want some uh, fatter food here? I'm thinking white stuff. Like uh, I don't think this is wine for meat because the acidity really is high, and I'm thinking more for like deep bottom fish uh, to go with this. Not something that you want to cook too much, but um, and you want to play light and mild, like not too much like funny sauces around. Although maybe some. Uh, well, actually, I'm changing my mind. Hollandaise sauce and steamed fish and I am really sitting at the table. La Vallesana Pinot Grigio delle Venezie uh, from the Micheli family. They started off like in, uh, in the late uh, like 1990s and um, they develop a business that is kind of relatively new for the wine industry because 2001 is when really when everything started to be reality. Um, just to give you some more information about the winery while I'm letting some oxygen get through my the, the wine, because you know guys, maybe I didn't mention this, but this is not like uh, I'm cracking open the bottle and I'm here with you. No funny business, no behind the scenes, everything is first take. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, what I was gonna say, yeah, roughly they started off with 30 hectares and now they moved towards the 100 hectares. The winery estate is called La Presa and why am I talking like this because I'm looking to with my brain the other side of the brain is saying like what am I smelling I'm getting a uh, you know the pears for sure the passion fruit what else do you know this this means so uh, good boy what do you want or what are you talking about but yes I'm talking about Ripe pears, I'm talking about exotic fruit, like uh, there's some uh, passion fruit, but lychees, the floral, kind of floral fruit. No, I think I nailed it with the lychees. It is just like lychee juice. So it's like white pulp fruit, exotic touch, oiliness. So relatively spicy and aromatic with a pretty round uh, um, feeling out of that you get out of it and a uh, crispy finish, man. Third generation winemakers, Pamela and Andrea Paladin, uh, are running the show now with uh, Tenuta San Bartolomeo uh, Winery. Uh, the name of the wine is Largo dei Cinque, five. I wouldn't know how to translate Largo, but Largo is like a, one of those streets. Largo means large, but Largo, uh, you know, there is Stretto and Largo, so it's like a relatively bigger street. Let's go taste the wine. Let's go taste the Spino Grigio delle Venezie from the Treviso area um, uh, with the... Pinot Grigio, a little bit darker, this is 2018, we are in the Treviso area, beautiful town once again guys, when you have the chance, you know, you can land in Verona, you can land in uh, Venice, uh, I don't think Trento has an airport, it doesn't, or maybe like a small one, but so Verona and Venice is where you want to go, and in between there is Treviso, beautiful, pretty little town. Yes, you can tell that the wine has got a little bit of age in it. Uh, what? Why? Because together with the white flowers, the wine is releasing a hazelnut, creaminess, some butteriness, so maturity of the fruit, and uh, the apples are not the green apples, but they're just like red apples, almost like grated apples. You know when you were a kid? I don't know if your mom used to do it. My mom, you know, like she's really really sweet you know she was just grating the apples when I was feeling sick poor little Philippa and so 
it is what it was on the nose is on the palate grated apples with a dash of lemon in this case and um, something that was in there if the butteriness comes through again butteriness this is a wine um, that is already showing some maturity creaminess um, you can you can get this I think the uh, uh, scallops chicken scallops uh, creamy chicken scallops and you will make whomever you invited for dinner tonight really happy Bennati uh, the name is Igadi 2018 here the <laughs> I, I smiling why am I smiling because the Antonio Bennati used to his nickname was Tony Recciotto I like this it puts me back in uh, you know like uh, once upon a time in America that's exactly like uh, the moment 1870 we're talking about this guy Tony Recciotto why Tony Recciotto because Recciotto is doesn't have anything to do with Pinot Grigio Ricciotto is the father of all wines in Valpolicella, is the dessert wine, sweet wine, that has to be, you know, the grapes have to age like for five, six months, then they shrivel, lots of enzymatic reaction, then you press them and you have like this amazing dessert wine, from which one day, by out of mistake, the Amarone was born. But you know, what does it have to do with Pinot Grigio? Nothing at all. Let's come to the wine. Uh, Annibale is the son that carried out the business of Tony Ricciotto, and um, uh, let's it's, uh, it's time to go taste the wine. Um, you know, although the wine is from 2018, it's not too dark in color. The nose is uh, relatively spicy, uh, licorice, and uh, like uh, some, some kind of earthiness there. I know what you're wondering. So like, what fruit are you getting? Is, is tangerine but not like is the, the you know like when you are actually when you are peeling an orange you're in a train and someone behind you is peeling an orange and you go like all of a sudden you have like the train <laughs> smells like an orange peel which I love by the way together with um, bread crusty elements some eastiness should I carry on? Let's carry on. I, I, you know, we were talking about structure. The wine, this is Pinot with structure. The, I think the label is right. Creaminess, butteriness, the age is adding up these uh, extra layers to the Pinot Grigio. Ripe fruit, way much riper fruit than I was expecting, to be honest. Uh, so it's more on the total red apples, uh, some white flowers together with it, a little bit of vegetal, some vegetal notes as well, and, um, and nuts, toasted nuts. Um, what would I pair it with? Um, I think this is a wine that needs some food, and I'm thinking right now some uh, pasta al forno. I don't know why, because maybe pasta al forno you can fill it like with some peas and maybe some uh, light ragu sauce and then you have some uh, cheese that you have put on top that is becoming melted underneath but crunchy on the top with some uh, when you serve it a little bit of parmigiano that is going to be going really really well i think with this peanut i was almost forgetting Talking about the Consorzio delle Venezie, the DOC delle Venezie appellation. Well, first of all, you get to know that the world of Pinot Grigio, the vineyards of Pinot Grigio in the planet, are basically 50% almost in Italy. And guess what? 85% of it are in the Le Venezie appellation. How many winemakers produce Pinot Grigio in this area? There is 324 of them and 39 are cops. So within the cops, there is even more winemaker. So in other words, there's in hundreds of winemakers that produce this beautiful white wine of Italy, by the way, the most recognized Italian variety. In the past, this wine used to be pretty like dilute and in the 90s was like a very small percentage of vines was Pinot Grigio, roughly was 3,000 hectares. Today is 25, 26,000 hectares of Pinot Grigio. And right now, this Pinot Grigio is way more fruit driven, way more complexity, above all, way more length. In the past, it was kind of dilute and neutral. Right now, there is spices, there is uh, um, minerality and way more complexity. Basically, 
this appellation has brought a brand new revolution. As of 2017, this is how young the consortium is. By the way, the largest consortium in Italy across three regions, Trentino, Veneto and Friuli. Boom. Where is the revolution? The revolution is the fact that there is vineyards, new vineyard management, young entrepreneurs, young vigneron. They're all there making sure that the world can drink the delicious Pinot Grigio delle Venezie. Are you wondering what to pair with your Pinot Grigio? Well, there's plenty ways to go. First of all, Pinot Grigio with its spiciness, natural spiciness is perfect with an aperitivo moment. That's uh, I think the, bo the best you can do. So like little nibbles of, of course, like fried fish, uh, sushi, guacamole and chips. I mean, that kind of stuff. I think there is no better variety, no better wine than Pinot Grigio delle Venezie to go for. Do you want to have pasta with Pinot Grigio? Of course you should have pasta. It's an Italian product at the end of the day. So, pasta. Well, with pasta, I would be quite cautious with going, going to, with, I would go with some light sauces. You know, like you want to go like light fish sauce or you can go like some pasta with veggies. Beautiful risotto that you can have it with, you know, like a, a beautiful risotto, like because of the cheese, the fatness of the cheese, the acidity of Pinot Grigio is going to cut through it and make it as a perfect food companion. I would refrain from heavy ragu sauces or risotto with, I don't know, like bone marrow risotto. That could be a little bit too much. You need something with heavier body. Main course? Well, main course you can work with, you know, like white meat, chicken, of course, fish, but not fish that you're gonna cook for too long. You want something that is like lightly like steamed or baked and a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, dash of lemon, salt, boom, off you go. Pinot Grigio is basically the ultimate Italian white wine. And what is the Italian kitchen about? Simplicity. One, two, maybe three ingredients and off you go.